Hello, today I'm going to show you how I structure my Angular application to be readable, scalable and maintainable at the same time. So let's switch to Visual Studio Code and start creating our Angular structure. Here we have a basic Angular application structure created by Angular CLI. Before we start creating our Angular structure, I'm going to show you an extension I use on a daily basis. The extension is called Angular Schematics. So it's a simple extension which allows us to create any type of Angular schematics uh, just by right click on a folder structure and choosing what we want to create. So as simple as that. By right clicking on the app folder and choosing generate a module, we are going to create our core module. In this module, we are going to put all core functionalities related to our app, such as authorizations, guards, interceptors, handlers, or any others. Right click on the core, select generate the service, name it auth and place it into auth folder. This service will handle our authorization stuff. Again, we are using Angular schematics, right click here and generate another schematics. And this time we are choosing guards and place them in the guards folder. And uh, this will going to be our out guard and we'll just add a few options and generate it. This guard is going to check whether a user is authorized or not to access a route. Now we are creating a login guard, which I use to prevent logged in users to access a login page. The next one is going to be a role guard. Usually I use role guard when I want to check whether a user has a role to access some route. Guards are returning booleans and you can use any kind of logic inside to return a boolean or true or false uh, and to allow or disallow user to activate or deactivate a route. Now we are creating interceptors folder and placing an uh, error interceptor inside of it. Error interceptor will handle requests, actually intercept all requests and uh, throw an error to user in a user format, let's say uh, in a kind of uh, notification or alert or anything when a, uh, an error occurs. The next folder is going to be services, where I'm going to put a login service here to handle login requests. Now I'm creating user service. The reason why I do it and why I use the user service is to store all data about the user from JVT, let's say. So when I need a user ID or user email or user roles or anything else about the user, I just call the user service and get the data from it. Also, I have created a token service here to handle token requests, uh, refresh token or anything about a token. So I have a handlers folder here to create some handlers or anything you need in your app. I'm going to create a module called public. This public module will hold all public files means that everything which has to be accessible for non-registered users will be placed there. For example, 404 pages, a login page, a presentational page, about us page, or anything which is public. After generating this public module, I'm going to create a public component placed in the root of, it, of the folder, and it will be a flat component so uh, that component will hold the uh, router outlet and it will uh, handle routes for this module. The next what am I doing is creating a new folder called components. So I'll keep all components for this public module stored here. And then I'll create another folder for storing uh, module, models, actually 
Angular interfaces here, so it will be available to the public folder. Uh, then I'll create a new folder called HTTP. And after that, I'm creating a services folder as well. What is the difference? Uh, I like to separate these two because the one is uh, HTTP is communicating with API and services uh, I've created like just for communication between components itself. So this is a structure for the uh, for this public module. And at least I'm adding pipes or any other folders needed for a project. So this is it. We have a public uh, module with all of these components for itself. Now I'm generating a private module, which is totally opposite of this public module. So it will have everything like in a public module, but uh, it will be just for registered users. So I'm, I'm going to repeat the steps to create uh, after creating this uh, uh, after generating this module, I'm going to add a flat component called uh, private and add router outlet inside of it. And then I will just uh, copy the structure from the public. So I'll have the same folder structure with pipes and uh, components, models, HTTP and services as well. The next one uh, is a shared module. I'm generating a shared module and it will follow the same structure as the previous two modules but there are some uh, small differences for example I won't create uh, any uh, flat component inside the shared module because I don't need it uh, I'll keep other structures maybe remove HTTP here uh, folder because I'm not going to call any APIs from the shared components also, after creating, uh, I will include this, in, actually import this shared module into public and the private modules. So I'll make everything uh, inside this shared module accessible to these two modules, private and public. So there is no need to duplicate and to call the same uh, libraries or anything uh, twice. So every single module will have uh, everything which is called in the shared module. Now when it comes to styling, what I like to do actually is to create a SCSS theme folder here. So first SCSS then I'll create a default theme here in SCSS and after that I'm going to add a partials folder here for holding uh, actually partials uh, such as uh, styles color colors or anything like buttons like oh, if you want to separate these from the primary theme SCSS you will keep it like this and this and then just call them for example I'll here uh, add a variable called black like for colors and inside of this uh, default theme I'll use this uh, colors SCSS and uh, use this uh, variable from this previous colors and as a color so it's really easy to do but uh, it's it saves uh, on thinking about the colors and uh, it's more maintain maintainable when it comes to changes. So you will be able to change this black uh, for some kind of uh, different black color, like uh, with, with some opacity or anything. So it will be easy because you just have to go to colors and just change it. So this is an example here. Also, I add a SVG folder for storing SVG icons if needed or images or anything else. So it's up to you what you will uh, add here in this folder. But this is something I use, especially is useful when you are creating a, a Angular material theme and you have to create a theme here to be able to style material uh, things. 
so this is it for this video i hope you found this video interesting and if you have any suggestions like for the structure or the way or your approach uh, please share the your structure in the comment section or links to your structure uh, also there is no perfect structure which is unique but i hope this uh, structure i use uh, is the closest to the default things you will need in your project so if, for every single project uh, like this so thank you for watching you don't have to subscribe to my channel if you like the video just save it or have it somewhere in your mind so thanks for watching and see you in the next video